Spike Rebel Music Experience, and today we have a special guest, sister of the legendary James Brown. I would like to invite her. Come on, Sister Karima Muhammad, better known as what? Fanny Brown. Fanny God, Brown. sister. So good to see you. All right. Now we got a lot to talk about. Hello, world. I'm here. Thank you, God. Step. Oh. Thank you, God. Just trying to get up on this stool. Okay. All right. I'm well, up here. What you got in your hand? I have pictures of me and my brother all down through time. Turn, turn it to the camera. Oh, yes. I will turn them to the camera for sure. Uh, this is when I was 15. And I think we were at the Auditorium Theater, downtown Chicago. Hmm. I want to say 1971. It'll be right, right. I was getting ready to go into my 16th birthday or right at in 71. Okay. And you guys look very, very happy right there. Is that uh Oh, we were. We were. He had just did a big, big concert and come off stage and got dressed for to get out of there for the evening. And as you come off, of course, in the evening, you always got to lay that hair and look good. Uh -huh. So he had to dry that hair and get sharp. So I don't want to mess it up with my paint, but uh, okay. what you got behind there? Oh, okay. The <laughs> next one. Is you mean I can, I don't know. no? I can hold them. I just come out with them. The next one was a picture that James signed for me, mm -hmm. and at the top it say to my sister Fanny, I love you, and he signed it to my sister James Brown, Fanny, I love you. That's how he signed it, and uh, this was I want to say about four and a half to five months before he passed. And he didn't only leave one for me, he signed one to my oldest son, Daniel, one to my baby boy, Brady, and one to my oldest granddaughter, Octavia Danielle. So he was now, giving us Are you his only sister? I'm the child that James Brown claimed. I'm the child that James Brown legally gave the name to. Okay. I'm also the child that I was raised on the weekends and some weeks when I was out of school, I was raised on the road. He allowed Miss Gertrude Sanders, his wardrobe mistress, to make sure that I was taken care of, make sure to know me and talk to me, nobody in that van. Only from the age of what? From the age of like 15, 16. 15, you were on tour with him? That's on the weekends. Just, I'd come home and go back to school. In Chicago? And, yes. Wow. And every Friday I was at O'Hare or Midway, and of course they had student rates, so the, Plain fare wasn't that much, $68, $78 going and coming round trip. <laughs> Let me see what else you got. You got some uh, pictures. This one is my tribute song you, you that are. I made for James. 17 days after he passed, I had made this song for James before he passed. And I'm sorry if it looked kind of crazy, but I had made this song for him. And I was telling one of the JBs, a gentleman named Spike, who played the Congos another Spike, for James. Not, not me, not yes. me, another Spike. And you hear me say a gentleman named Spike, he <laughs> played the Congos for James. And uh, he's also in one of the movies about all the bands when they were doing the uh, drum bands all over. He could help in the production of working those children in a movie that was out years ago. But anyway, I told him uh, four days before, four or five days before James died, no, it wasn't even at the three. That we were not going to be on stage hollering James Brown, James Brown, James Brown no more as we introduce him on. Okay. That from now on, we was going to say, he's the godfather of soul and we love him so. See, so that's yeah, what I decided that. to do. I, I told him the words. <laughs> then I called Mr. Bobbitt, who was James' manager, and told him also we need to find a studio. The show was to be in New Jersey on December the 26th. The 27 was another show in another part of New Jersey. And then we were going to do 
Christmas in New York, and New Year Eve at BB King Club. Then we had 13 shows in January now, all across Canada. I keep hearing you say we doing these shows. So you were part of a band. You sing. You I dance on stage with James off and on. Every time that we were doing a concert and I could get into the room, okay, he would say, "My tutor, fine by we ain't got my tutor, my tutor," <laughs> and he would bring me on stage so the people would see me, and then he would say, "Hurry up back out there, fan and I." Go back out there now. People gonna buy everything. Them thing you don't stay with me, they gonna buy everything you got. Go on out there and give people my souvenir. So <laughs> I would sell the souvenirs of James and you name it, we had it from James Brown balloons and bumper stickers and flags, uh, living in America uh, calendars, uh, living in America flags, the James so all Brown unreal panties, panties, yes. hats, <laughs> shirts. Uh, we only thing we didn't get to was the socks. We had James Brown blue jeans. We had the James Brown. Ow, I feel good. Bath mat. We had every kind of t-shirt, every kind of towel. The hand. The uh, gotta take your high your hand. I mean, you name it. We had it in James Brown product. So that would mean that you probably knows knew all his wives. Oh, uh, fiance, managers, the the corporate people. Uh, the From the age of 17 on, I got a chance to see a lot of the people, but James wouldn't let me associate with them. On on the higher thing? Or are you talking about the band? Uh, bands, managers, all of them. He wouldn't let me associate with the people because I was a young lady out there. He was okay. striving to teach me to be a young lady. Okay. Coming out of the ghetto of Chicago, y'all know I was rough. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> what you, what you, what you, what, where where was you at? 47 or something? Uh, 42nd in Michigan was my first house and from there I moved to 58th in Michigan. Okay. So I've been to That's Chicago. That's all knocked down now most of that. Yeah, 58th is out still there. Okay. And yes, it was courtway buildings and things like that. The next picture is a smaller picture. And this is my new song that I'm coming out with, and you all gonna hear it today. Ow! Pull up your pants, do the James Brown dance. Okay, what's all that about? It's the second song that I did. The first one I did was the time I did He's a Godfather Soul. I pulled all James Brown band members together. The famous flames that was living, which was Bobby Bird, Kush Griffin. Of course, everybody, Jabo, Fred Wesley, Fred Thomas, Make Jerry you. Poindexter, Ron Laster, all of them that was original JBs and the original Famous Flames that were still living. Two did not make it. Sweet Charles did not make it. And Maisie Opaka didn't make so it. So you they still keep in touch with all of these people? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're all like my aunts and uncles. These are people that I truly love with a passion and when I say it I say it because when you love someone mm -hmm. and then you look at all the people that it takes to make them and help them stay where they are as a person mm -hmm. and the people really work day and night every day and night with James helping him building taping recording whatever he say do that yes sir Mr. Brown okay. this yes Mr. Brown we have it yes sir Mr. Brown the boss say do that. The, the boss say do that. So, of course, being around them for so many years, you can't help but to love and respect all that they do. As you watch musician after musician do their best to be the best. Mm. Stand on that stage hour after hour. Some days they would do two shows, especially when it was night. They would pull two shows. Some nights it might be three shows. On Saturdays, the matinees and things like that, they might do four, sometimes five shows a day. James truly earned the reputation of the hardest working man in show business because he never stopped working. So you was right there and witnessed all that. So now you yes. did jump to subject because you said something about you made a song called Pull Up Your Pants do the James Brown dance. Yes, that's so coming out soon. It's not what out is that about? I got an idea. Well, the first one that I did... 
was with the JBs. And when I got through doing it, I was just more fussing than anything else. I told them to reverse, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Okay. And give me a new sound to it. So that's what I asked Fred Wesley to do. And of course, Fred Wesley, Fred Thomas, who's funky D, low down, dirty D, that James be talking about as the bass man of okay. Fred Thomas. Uh, and I asked him to just play I'm Black and I'm Proud, but change it a little bit so I can give our children something to be proud of again. Of course, I was just fussing. Boy, pull your pants up. Get them pants up before I get that belt and whoop your... Pull them up. Get them pants up now. You know your grandmama don't like that. Here come your granddaddy with that strap. So, of course, I gave it to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to listen to. And his daughter's daughter had a chance to tell me, my dad had played this record to every person, king, ruler, shape, leader of every country in the world. My father plays this song. Everybody know about, boy, pull your pants up. And of course, Minister Farrakhan asked me later on to go back and get the children and let the children express what they feel about their pants being down. So I went back, I found four different people that could do it and we sat down and it took us hours and hours to do it. But thank God we got a deal in February of 2007 and we finished the CD and we put it out. You can go to cdbaby.com and get a copy of it or listen to it <laughs> as it's going on about pull your pants up, you sagging down. And I wanted to put in it, if you use both hands, you got to do the James Brown. Right. Because James always, always pulled up his pants. Right. And if you pulling yours up so they won't fall, you are definitely doing the James Brown. Well, of course, the JB said the title was too long. But in the record, I start saying, sagging is what? What spelled backwards? And then I start oh. explaining to the children <laughs> that though... You're sagging your pants. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King and black people marched and our grandparents and older sisters and brothers to give us respect, quality, and dignity about ourselves in life. And you all have slapped them and James Brown in his face by sagging your pants down. He said, we're black and proud. Y'all say, no, we are sagging backwards, which is backwards, N-I-G-G-A-S. <laughs> so I pushed to them that you are wearing it in your clothing and now the clothing makers have made the clothes even if you're not wearing them saggy they have put the pockets so low on the clothing in the back to look like you're wearing the word on your clothing every time I got you, you walk. that's deep it is deep, deep, but it's a disrespect to us as a people. It's a slap in the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King face, the Dr. Honorable Elijah Muhammad face, and of course, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is striving to make us understand that we can be black and proud. So on the, I see where that's going, and I look like uh, everything you said is truthful, but what on the positive side from the music in your shows you got coming up, are you doing for the youth? And... Uh, your whole well, movement. of course, I have the uh, Stop the Killing. The Children Want to Keep Living. That's one of the songs you all will hear today. That's another song. Yes, sir. And we have, uh, besides he's the God of our soul and I love him. So we have uh, my edition of Pull Up Your Pants and Do the James Brown Dance. And I think you're going to cut off with, please put down the gun. Please, please. And Flavor Flame is saying, drop it. Flavor Flav. Yes, sir. I put him on there. I was crazy. <laughs> so you've met all of these rap artists and all of Everybody these? on the planet Earth <laughs> love James Brown. Right. Everybody. You can't even move, think, or act without James Brown being involved in it when it comes to music. So would it be true to say his, he's planted a seed in you? And now oh. you're 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 evolving into your own self. But I also yes. know I've been to your house in Jolly. Yeah, you you creating a commemoration for him. Yes, uh, for him and for myself. You can't go down in history without each other because I was a part there for Gertrude Sanders, who was his wardrobe lady that helped raise me on the road. For Lynn Collins, who was passed in 2003. For Martha High, the women that was there as and performing with James when I was a child. Of course, and then of course, all the band members, all of them, right? Regardless to whether they living and dead, we had good times. As I got old enough to be able to 
communicate and go out with them. I want you to really just, we're going to wrap this up. So what is, uh, James really was a beautiful person or strict kind of what? Cause I, James I, I, is a multi-talented genius. Okay. James is a stern, hard, and I'm going to use the word task master when it comes to that music. Okay. James could hear a bird chirping 50 miles away and start doing what the bird is doing. Exactly. Wow. James could hear the insects, and that's because he lived in the woods by himself when Pops left and went to the army, and he was in that house by himself for some months before Pop came back as he was joining the Navy and gave him to his Aunt Minnie. Mm. So James lived in the woods. His friends was the raccoons and the squirrels. And wow. James loved to play with snakes and things like that. So things that no one else would pay attention to. These were what James heard every day out in the woods. Okay. So God was making him what he wanted to make him as a young boy. Something that no one else probably could ever even tap wow. into. To understand him on that level. If James would be performing... And you mess up, you hear the JBs talking about he'll turn around and do this and be fine. And they knew what it was, but other people didn't know what he was right, doing. Right. He'd turn around and he might even stop a song and say, start it over again. All right, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but you all paid to see a good show. And we're going to start this whole show over because it's not right. So he's a perfectionist. And so he was too much a perfectionist. He taught me to be a perfectionist, but at the time, I didn't know to be a perfectionist. Also, would have people say one day in life, Miss Brown, you a slave master. You work us harder than the slaves work the slaves in the slavery time. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, would you do a couple songs with us? Oh, yes, I have no problem doing. This is just a picture of me and James <laughs> as we were walking along one day through the airport. And some people was taking pictures, and I said, here, take my camera and get uh, me and my brother. And I just leaned in, and we took a picture. I have a lot more. I have hundreds and hundreds of pictures from being out on that road from 15 and a half to 16 years old mm -hmm. all the way through 50. It looked like you was having a great time. Yes. Look, yes. one of the last things I want to ask is... uh. Now, most talented geniuses have something else they do. So I don't want to know what else James Brown did outside of music, but for you, are you, you anything with food? I can or, tell you what James did. James supported so many people, so many people. You can go to Augusta, Georgia, and just as soon as you get off the plane there, the cab drivers and the people that pull your luggage off the plane, everybody will tell you, we all would be at the airport and we know Mr. Brown was coming in. If we had our light bill, our gas bill, just told him we need to pay our bill. Our children was so in he school. Was he would go in his pocket and give him 500. Santa Claus give him 600. To the yes. Is that what that's about? James would give the children toys. And of course, you'll hear me sing about it on my tribute to him with all of his band members, the Soul Gems, the JBs, and the, uh, the original Famous Flames that was still living. Tell me quickly, that's him. Now, you. Yes. Of I, course. The food always man, what? love to eat. <laughs> love to eat. <laughs> Are you love to you cook. You must be a chef or something. Love to cook. Yes, I am. Love to cook. And love to see people eat food and enjoy it. Okay. I have a youth center in Joliet where I work with the children. When I moved to Joliet in 1990, I was saying a year and a half before that, I'm never going there. And God made me go. I got a call from a gentleman that said him and his family was going to be set out. And he didn't know where he was going to take his children. It would take him three months to save up enough money. I asked him what did he owe. He said 1800 for the back taxes and the insurance and the mortgage for that particular month. Of course, I had about $1,800 and one cent in the bank. Mm -hmm. And I went and got it all for him and his children to be able to stay in the property. I did not want to see children on the street. I said when I was about eight or nine years old that if God let me live, I hope one day to get a big old raggly house and take in all the unwanted children from all over the world, not knowing that as I prayed to God for it, one day I would definitely get that big old raggly house. And it's an original old slave mansion. It has four floors with the basement. It has uh, 10 rooms on each floor, except the top floor. I think it has something like seven to eight rooms. And uh, that's about it. 
I just decided I would give children something to do. They were shooting and driving by when I moved there. And I said to all the children to uh, stop shooting, stop fighting. We don't have nowhere to go. I said, yes, y'all do. I'm going to take down these five brick garages and I'm going to build up you all a basketball court. And that's what I did. I built up a 40 by 80 basketball court for them. And I start feeding them every day with the bricks we took from the court. The big old cinder bricks mm -hmm. with the two holes in the middle. We just built up <laughs> different towers for them to stand up about five feet high and be able to eat. And I would cook and feed them every day and teach them about God and have them read a copy, at least a page or something of the final call, something out of the Bible, something out of the Holy Quran, and listen to the tape of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I like Muhammad. the queen of a community. Uh, that's, I love that's, all that's, my that's how you appear to me. I love all my people. I am their mother. Whether I had them or not, I tell them I'm your auntie and uncle. Some woman had you. We the mother and father of all people. And I'm going to help raise our people. And I will come back and tell you about the hair product that I have that's going to give all our people jobs. They want a job since America is falling in. But this. look, right now, we want to hear you. Bless us with oh, yes, two or three of those. Bonk yes, it. sir. Yes, sir. All I'll right. Be right back with one. So y'all stay tuned. Sister <laughs> Fanny Brown, better known as Kareem Muhammad. Uh, Sister Kareem Muhammad. Bless us with some of that James Brown soul. Yes. <laughs> Get up off of that thing. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for him.
the land gives me some more. We all came to say, we love you, God, by my soul. My heart is about to explode. I'm loud talking, fanny, selling James Brown souvenirs from Japan to Miami. Thanks, world, for supporting all our family. My brother. Oh, my God. 
stop, 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 stop. I'm graduating next week. I ain't in the game no more. So, Fanny, thanks for coming on the show. You're more than welcome. That was a beautiful performance. Thank you. And where can we look forward to seeing you? Well, right now, you can see me with the Godfather Soul JB gave it to me hair products. I produce a super growth that if I put it on your head, you have hair anywhere. You have fuzz in a couple of minutes, but you have hair so, anywhere between 45 so minutes. I can look like that. And 24 so, hours. <laughs> okay. And I did it on so many men and women that had lost their hair. What I want to do now is put it on cancer patients. I have one that removes all the sores and the bores and things out of me and heads. When you see them have surgery, I ran into a man that had surgery 10 days, all the scars and things were back. Okay. I put it on his head, told him to use it for one week, three times a day. His head is cleared up. <laughs> I have one that removes the locked in hair when you got hair just stuck down pat. Okay. And I have one that removes and lets you take down your dregs and put them back up. It can take down the dregs. So you're not doing music I have and hair products. Yes, James Brown gave it to me. What's the, the name of the hair That's the name of it. The Godfather Soul, JB, gave it to me. And I thank God <laughs> for my brother. Then I have one that super waves your hair. And I also have one that I put it on the women at Black Expo. Had, I didn't give them nothing but a drop like on a toothpick. Had them pull it on their hair anyway once they released the oil. And I curled their hair with my finger and told them to count to five. And they curled with just there. Everybody in Black Expo. I was doing thousands of people. And they were all falling out laughing at the curls that they got from <laughs> just one, at me. one drop. You know, when I take this hat off after, <laughs> after the show, she's going to put some on my head, all right? But, again, <laughs> are you on the internet? What's going on with your music? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm bringing everything to the internet now because I'm a little bit behind time. I'm a little bit older, so I'm yeah. trying to stay away from it, but I see there's no other way to yeah, go. Right, right. So I am the God Sister Soul at gmail.com, and you all just give me a week or two, and I'll have it up. And also, I'm going to put the hair product on the TV, but I'm giving people jobs with it. It's not just a hair product for me. I decided since there's no jobs for the people and the public, that anybody invest 200, I will give you 400 in the product. Hmm. So if you buy one for your own leisure at $10, or the bigger one at 20, and give everybody that little drop on the toothpick tip, mm -hmm. and they like it, you get 20 customers, and call me, I got 20 people with $10. I'm bringing you $400 worth of product. So you sell your 20 and then you got 20 more That's to sell. Right. I'll probably be rich then. But look, thank you all for having That's what us. It's about. This is the sister, Fatty Brown, James Brown's sister. And if you like anything that we're doing, this is what we do at the stage, the show.tv. We're bringing artists around the world, local, that are doing what God put in them for yes. positive reasons. And if you like the artwork, of course, I didn't quite finish, but uh, she's speaking about Afro. This might be Gil's got hair and a row ass <laughs> back in the day. But the whole thing was about funky soul in the city and the congas, etc. And it's glittering and it's a lot of festive Caribbean colors. But that's what we do here. So again, I'm, this is the Spike Rebel Experience. Thank you all for watching. Again, who is this? Who are you? I am Kareem Muhammad. That's my holy name. But I am Fanny Brown Burford, the God Sister Soul, the name given to me by the Godfather Soul, James Brown. May he rest in peace. We signing out. Let's go. This is the Spike Rebel experience.